Hey guys, I'm Matt Pittman with Meat Church, here to show you how to do a reverse sear ribeye on your Traeger. So ribeyes are my favorite steak. Uh, the reverse sear method will work with any kind of steak, uh, but today we're gonna focus on a ribeye. And for me, my perfect steak is about an inch and a half thick. So to do a reverse sear, you need a thick steak. I don't wanna go too thick. I would really personally not go more than two inches, definitely not near three. That's kinda of getting into prime rib territory. So we're gonna take a whole rib roast that we have here today and kinda of cut these to light. All right, so let's cut this. So there's a lot of fat here on the outside. I'm gonna to wait to kinda of trim that until after I've cut my steaks. I find it a little bit easier. And so this is a, this is a boneless rib roast. You could go with kinda of either that you like. And I, I think it's easier to to cut on this side. So I'm gonna turn it around here and, and uh, cut my steak. So like I said, I like about an inch and a half thick. Want a real sharp knife. Now I'm just gonna cut myself uh, two or three steaks for today. Gorgeous. All right, so we've got three beautiful steaks here. I'm gonna season them up. You got some options when it comes to Meat Church and how you wanna season. A lot of people go with our beef rub, our holy cow. And what we found lately is a lot of people really love the Holy Gospel. It's a little more mild than the Holy Cow, and it's amazing on steak. So we're going we're gonna to apply a, a pretty good coating uh, of Holy Cow on all sides of these steaks. Sides, top, bottom. Be messy with it. If you know me, you know I like to season up pie so you get a nice, even application on your steaks. All right. And then what I think an optional step is I like to come back across the steak with some garlic and herb, which is a nice touch. So if you want to have a little more depth to your, to your flavor profile, you can add this as well. All right, so let's talk about the reverse sear. This is one of the most simple things you guys can do on your grill. It's a very simple two-step process. Step one is you're going to smoke the steak at 225 degrees. If you've got super smoke, I would turn that feature on as well to impart even more smoke in your steak. The second step, once this steak reaches 120 degrees internal temperature, I'm going to crank the temperature up on my grill to maximum heat. So 450 degrees, or if you've got an ironwood or a timberline, go ahead and take it to 500. And then I'm going to sear these steaks two to three minutes per side, depending on your liking. Probably gonna go about three minutes. At that point, your steak is gonna approach 130 degrees internal temperature which is medium rare. Medium rare is 130 to 135. That's the perfect steak for me. If you like yours a little more well done, then you can either take the first step beyond 120 to higher closer to 130, or you can sear it for even longer. So there's a lot of latitude here in kind of what you're wanting to do. But we're gonna take these steaks that have been seasoned and sweated out, and we're gonna go put them on the grill that we've got prepared, 225 Super Smoke. All right, so we're out here at the grill. We've got this Timberline set up at 225 degrees Super Smoke. And I want to show you guys something. You got an option on a timberline and an ironwood that you can actually take your bottom grate off these racks here and you can drop it down a lower level for your sear later. So we've gone ahead and dropped it down. That way after I smoke them and I crank this up to 500, I don't have to mess with picking up this hot grate and trying to drop it down. So let's just go ahead and do that now. Now we're ready to go. We've got these seasoned ribeyes. We're going to go ahead and put them on. So this process is probably gonna take about 45 minutes, depends on the thickness of your steak, but I'd budget about 45 minutes, hour max, and you should be good to go. All right, so we've been smoking these 225 degrees super smoke for like 40, 45 minutes. I've checked the temp once already, so I know these are near 120. I'm gonna get in and just make sure. And if they're 120 degrees, I'm gonna pull them off. And dead on, so we're ready to go to the sear. We're gonna let this rest. We're gonna crank this grill to 500 degrees. It's probably gonna take 10 minutes or so, and then that's a good rest for the steak, and we're gonna put them on the serum and be done. Okay, guys, we've got this Timberline up to 500 degrees. We're ready to sear. Those things rocking and rolling. Listen to that sizzle. I'm just going to give them a little press to make sure they're really down on that grill grate. And I'm going to sear, you know, two to three minutes kind of to your liking depending on where you're going. I'm taking these to close to 130 degrees internal temperature. 
they'll continue to carry over cook a couple degrees after I pull them off. So for me, about two and a half minutes aside is going to be just perfect. So I'm going to shut this, let it keep going, set a timer, and come back in a couple minutes. We've been about two and a half minutes. I'm going to flip these over and let the other side sear. And give them a nice press again, just because I really want to make sure that meat is down on the grill grate. Okay guys, so we've got these steaks in off the grill and I like to finish them with a really good butter. So you can use like some sort of European butter, uh, but what I've done is I've made a compound butter. So I've gone to my local grocery store and bought an unsalted European butter and then I diced up a bunch of stuff that I wanted to go inside. So I've got inside of here, I've got basil, I've got some parsley, a little bit of chopped garlic, and then I roll it up in cellophane. And so I actually would just cut right through this package and peel the peel the cellophane off of it just to keep it nice and kind of together. And then I'm going to put a, a, a big disc of this butter on each of these steaks and just let it melt down over the steak, which is going to give you just an amazing finish uh, for your final product. Trust me, this is going to make your taste buds super, super happy. So we'll get some aluminum foil and just lightly tint this and let this butter melt over these steaks. I'm going to get the rest of my dinner ready and we're going to be ready to eat. All right, so the butter has completely melted over these steaks. You can see the garlic pieces here and, and some of the green like parsley and things that we put in this. These things smell amazing. And now it's time to slice into these. So if you look here, you can kind of see that perfect medium rare, top to bottom, can't be beat. I'm gonna finish that off with a little bit of, a little bit of salt. All right. I can't wait anymore, so I'm digging in. Mm. So good. So if you want this recipe, TraegerGrills.com slash recipes or just download the app.